Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another audio commentary of Futurama. This is Matt Groening. I'm Eric Horstead, writer and co-executive producer. This is Billy West. I do some of the voices on Futurama. I'm Brett Holland, uh, director. I'm Greg Vanzo, supervising director. David Cohen, executive producer. And Rich Moore, supervising director with Greg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is the third episode in the series, and this is a series that uh, it, it had a troubled beginning uh, with uh, the Fox Network, who, who felt that the show was too outrageous and too much outer space. So this was our attempt, the third episode, to uh, bring the show back to Earth. I was up really late poking through people's desks. All right, people, I will now outline today's 12-point agenda. We'll begin with point one, Dean race forward. Bachelor Chow, Matt, one of your earliest ideas for the show, I believe. Well, I think that's a good idea. I, I've always wanted to have Bachelor Chow right now, and so <laughs> this was uh, this it. Now, anyway, the, the network really, really uh, was freaked out by the show with the suicide booths and the... Uh, and, uh, and lobster creatures and, and Bender being so antisocial. And so, again, this was our show just to, to tone things down. This script was written specifically to their specifications. And their reaction, David? Worst episode ever. <laughs> yeah, they really, they really hated this uh, script. And uh, Sorry, Eric. <laughs> and, and this was the point at which we decided that uh, we are going to do the show that we wanted to do. That we that their notes made no sense anyway. They were completely contradictory, and uh, so uh, we did what we wanted. I've heard a lot of people say they really like this episode, actually, though, because uh, it is a little more down to earth, and it made people care a little more. I think about the characters of Fry and Bender. Yeah, I have to admit, it was one of my favorite episodes. So I liked it. I basically had fun drawing Fry's butt. <laughs> We all do. <laughs> so, Billy West, you're talking to yourself in this scene as Fry and the professor. Where did these voices come from? Well, you guys showed me the drawings originally, the model sheets of each character, and, and he was like, you could tell he was doddering and rickety, and, and I even act him that, to, that way, and he's got like a little bit of Wizard of Oz in him and a little this or that, and I fused them. It's funny, when we're in the studio, you do take on sort of the characteristics physically of the voice you're doing. I don't know if that's the way to do things, but I've always thrown myself, like, totally into it. Why aren't you answering my questions in the voices of the characters? <laughs> <laughs> Can I do it again? <laughs> well, the professor sounds like this. And he's all rickety, and he has a race of superhumans. Uh, and too Fry. late, too late. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we all know what he sounds like. <laughs> uh, this is the first episode we get to see Calculon. That's yes, oh, yeah, that's pretty exciting. Television history was made. Patrick, I've always known, but for you, my darling, I'm willing to convert. That's Maurice Lamarche as Calculon. He's always really funny whenever he goes into that role. Hmm, He's one of the greats, though. Fry, we've got to discuss your living arrangements. We've all talked it over. Uh, I had a rather peculiar perspective on this setup. I was trying to get uh, a little bit of depth. And this one worked out a little better. In close quarters, people do inconsiderate things without realizing it. I know, but I forgive you. No, Fry, by close quarters, I mean... You know, in these early episodes, we're all trying to nail the characters as best we can, uh, particularly Leela. <laughs> Yet I can see she's changed a little bit <laughs> yes. since that picture. <sighs> So, who's that weird-looking guy? That's a human. What's he do? Hey, usual human stuff. That Fry voice is a 25-year-old me. <laughs> no, I mean, it really, that's pretty much what I sounded like, I think, back then. I thought you were in a coma. That's what I wanted you to think with your soft human brain. Hey, uh, why is the TV getting smaller? We'd bill you for the coach. That line, I remember, uh, I don't know, if the astute viewer may have noticed that Hermes' lips were not move, moving at all there. I remember it just seemed kind of quiet, and we wanted him to say something, but we had already exhausted our animation budget. So we just said, eh, whatever. Who's going to notice? 
This is a very difficult sequence to draw because of the uh, rotating beverages and the number of martini glasses and the cutting and, and the yet hooking it comes up. in many other shows later on, too. <laughs> and you mean by number of martini glasses that made it difficult, you mean the number that were on your desk when you were drinking? <laughs> Are there, uh, uh, is there subliminal things that you put in in a scene like this, or am I imagining things? Oh, no, no. Just this wasn't uh, one of them? Too many late hours to have any extra time. <laughs> to get clever. <laughs> yeah, but the rents are outrageous. Why don't you just come move in It's good-looking cake. <laughs> I have to say this, that Bender is the greatest character. To me, he was like the, the breakout character because he can get away with doing all this stuff that you're not supposed to see on TV because he's a robot. Smoking and drinking and debauchery and. <laughs> I'm not going to go into uh, the full answer to this question, but the nerdiest, computeriest viewers out there might want to look up Bender's apartment number in the ASCII chart. <laughs> That's right, you heard me. <laughs> this was uh, probably the best shot to describe how small Bender's apartment was. Uh, the aerial down shot. You know, it's really hard in animation to do a confined space. This is that's really good. It's kind of cramped in here. I don't even have room to hang my clothes. Look, pal, you've only got one set of clothes, and you're not taking them off while I'm here. <laughs> well, I'm Bush. Good night. Wait, Bender, Bender. <laughs> uh, kill all humans. <laughs> First use of kill all humans, <laughs> perhaps. And not the last. <laughs> I was having the most wonderful dream. This conversation always sticks in my mind as one of the most memorable early sequences. Where's your bathroom? Bath what? Bathroom. What room? Bathroom. What what? Ah, never. <laughs> <laughs> little nuances, little body language, details. Sexy mama. Want to kill all humans? <laughs> Around the sure. studio, we called that snappy whistling. <laughs> yeah, but how is he able to whistle? <laughs> He's like a whistle chip in there somewhere. These are some of the early uh, drawings of the Planet Express ship, we didn't have any... 3D to work off of, so uh, we faked a lot of this. You're going to redo it, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, this will never be in the DVD. Place to live. Is that an invitation? Love your optimism, Fry. But seriously, you've got to tell Bender you're moving out. Yeah, but he might get kind of upset. I don't. Things I like about this is the uh, storytelling is a little bit more linear than on The Simpsons. <laughs> And I think we decided to do that early on because the, the setting is so fantastic and, uh, and science fiction-y that, that uh, we really tried to tell a, a story straight through. And I think it really has helped the show over its lifespan. Oh, it's a bad draw. <laughs> There's enough distractions there, you know, to, to keep you away from noticing. Like Fry's stomach. Uh, yeah, exactly. I think we see more of Fry's stomach in this show That's than right. any other episode. Watch Fry's belly grow throughout this episode. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy's belly sticking out also. <laughs> it's an now, epidemic. Is the restaurant guy um, um, John DiMaggio, too? Yes. That's John DiMaggio. And he's also the voice of Bender. The, yes, sir. The apartment manager here, actually. He does a great slob, go you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. I've <laughs> This is my favorite uh, background coming over here. I'm not sure we want to pay for a dimension we're not going to use. Inspired by? Escher. Escher? MC Escher. Or Esky, as we call him. Well, I give up. What's the catch? Oh, no catch. Although we are technically in New Jersey. Wahoo! Whatever. Never prouder. The New Jersey bashing begins, resuming in episode nine, probably a few other ones here and there. <laughs> episode eight also. To shreds, you say. Very well then. I think we were the first to come up with the idea with bashing New Jersey, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Is his apartment rent controlled?
Wow. <laughs> I love Hattie. She's a great character. Oh, Tress McNeil, yeah. With the, the lazy eye. <laughs> that cast on her face. This place has everything except the only thing I care about, a TV. It's got a TV, you young what you Even her cleavage line is wrinkly. <laughs> Ooh. Whoa, slow down. This place just doesn't feel like home. It just isn't cozy. <laughs> ah, I can barely move. It's perfect. <laughs> nice touch with the music. <laughs> And earlier, you, there was a little musical interlude that sounded retro y, like on Bewitched or one of those shows. Yeah. It's, uh, Christopher Ting, our composer, really has come up with a lot of great music for the series. Now, can I admit something? I've never seen The Odd Couple. <laughs> I really I haven't. Oh, you haven't? Well, no. well, then we also made up that cigar joke that you're seeing right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I noticed everybody howling with laughter at the animatic, so I assumed that this was a, a dead on parody. Well, not exactly. <laughs> Who was it? I remember when we first seen this, somebody was very upset that that nice chair was getting squashed up. Does anyone remember who that was? One of the designers, I think? Um, Tom Gamble. Oh, Tom Gamble, one yeah. of the writers? So he appreciated furniture. He really didn't like seeing it crushed like that. No. It's a, don't understand. It's, it's a, a nice chair. chair. Come on. <laughs> that beautiful drawing it's a perfectly of perfectly good chair. chair. <laughs> well, by that logic. <laughs> This whole thing doesn't make sense. <laughs> I notice Fry's fairly thin there. He'll get uh, quite a bit thicker. Oh, yeah. It's a miniature fruit salad. Oh, the early days. Mm. Another image that's kind of vivid in my mind here. <laughs> <laughs> we pulled frames on that because we wanted it really fast and violent. the Great, East Teriyaki style. Zev Yulon is a reference to my college roommate, Zev. Hey, oh. Zev. That's great. How's it going, Zev? Okay, Fry's belly's a little bigger. <laughs> Boy, in one night. <laughs> The viewer gets a lot of chances to figure out what's going on in this sequence with the TV going in and out. Tasty. Thank you. I made them myself. <laughs> <laughs> the wedding's about to start. If anyone here objects to this union, let them speak now or forever hold their... <gasps> is he objecting or backing up? Looks like both. I'm afraid my half-brother is correct. You see, I have a terrible secret, and that secret is... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Bummer. Hey, what happened to the TV? It just went out. This is an outrage. One little goof we've made in the history of the series is involving lowbrow beer, because when Fry first got frozen in 1999, he had a lowbrow beer in his hand. But uh, when he woke up, he is often... Uh, subsequently seen to be drinking lowbrow beer. I guess it might not be a mistake. It just survived for a thousand years. It's just One of the good. carefully planned things in the series <laughs> was the success of lowbrow beer. <laughs> the recipe has been in our family for several generations. Yeah, and you better get rid of whatever's causing it or we're out of this dump. Relax, Sonny. This kajigger will find the source of the <laughs> Buster Keaton said in an interview that the audience loves a slow thinker. <laughs> <laughs> what? It, apply, it applies to almost everybody in the scene. Yeah. There's your problem. Oh my God, Bender, it's your thingy. It's it's the thingy. Yeah. You people are nuts. My antenna never interfered with my old TV. You had cable. This is satellite. Obviously, your thoughts are being transmitted on the same frequency. They're on my cell phone, too. Madam, I believe you're mistaken. Wow, that lady's got a huge... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That <laughs> that's my favorite line. Right there. 
So Eric Horstead, you showed this script to a bunch of school children the other day. This is true. <laughs> this is true as a uh, little inspirational talk on how you can get a career writing. How did this uh, ass part go over? It actually hasn't happened yet. It's oh, it happening, on, happening on Friday. So. How do you envision it? It will, will go over. <laughs> I think there'll be lots of giggling and an appreciation of the fine achievement in writing that's occurred here. <laughs> 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 you going and me not going? I don't understand. Well, you were going to live in the closet anyway. Won't you be just as happy back in your old place? But then we wouldn't be roommates. I'll come visit sometime. You can visit me here. No, he can't. <laughs> <laughs> what style of animation is this? I know that there's traditionally like cell drawings and hand-painted stuff. Uh, well, <laughs> hand drawing Does anyone and... know? <laughs> I mean, this is like a different... This is a departure from all that stuff, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's uh, do hand drawing, and then it's uh, digitally ink and painted in this show, as opposed to The Simpsons or something. Yeah, that's what I meant, like hand-painted cells and yeah. that. So those have been pretty much replaced? Uh, yeah, pretty much. It's almost the same process, but it's all digital now, so... So the initial drawings are by hand, but the coloring... By a computer. Yeah. Would that be a good summary? Yes, exactly. There you go. And then we have the additional of all the 3D elements that we do, the, the more realistic elements, which are not in this show too much at all, but in other episodes, much. Ah, come on. Bender loves mobs. Only when he's in them, and you know it. You really hurt his feelings. This is one of the uh, <clears throat> earlier jackets that Leela had... Uh, which I think we all tend to favor her pilot's jacket a little more in the later episodes. It kind of looks like a little petticoat or yes. something. Yes. <laughs> shadow there. How come the, sh the light's in front of him and the shadow's in front of him? <laughs> oh. That's the future for you. <laughs> Could have been a brighter bulb behind him somewhere. This was tricky, I remember. Showed these microscopic things. Mm -hmm. That's very tricky. Thank God for Bender's focus out eyes. <laughs> This was difficult to pull off a drunk bender. <laughs> Great shot. <laughs> Leave me alone. Look at that it's easy for us to write five o'clock rust in the script. <laughs> <laughs> at least easier than for you to, to draw. <laughs> we actually broke a rule here as we're never supposed to bend Bender's neck, but it, <laughs> it looked kind of funny and sad and pathetic, so we did it anyways. It looks funny. There's got to be a better way to deal with this. Like we gotta abolish that, that rule. <laughs> well, if that would work. Are you crazy? That's little Bender you're talking about. I can't cut it off. You're not a robot or a man, so you wouldn't understand. What's he getting at? <laughs> yeah, you know, no, the joke behind that is. Uh, originally, we had a little tick in Bender's eye, but that was too distracting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was like, yeah. a little psychotic. So. <laughs> the sound effects on that and the fast running. This always sticks in my mind. Yeah. It's it's like um, uh, the Lost, Lost Weekend, Weekend with yeah. Ray Milland. Uh, Public Library, that's great. <laughs> that three o'clock in the morning lounge music. And... Do you think do, do people get that owls are a nuisance in the future? Have we laid that in enough? We That's started out laying it in a lot, but I actually I met somebody about a week ago who was really into that. Really, they were very excited about that. Excellent. That rats are gone, but owls are everywhere. Owls are now the new pest. <laughs> well, then the oh the the new owls ate the uh, fries potpourri in his uh, new digs in New oh, yeah. New York. Did that make it on the air? I don't think that I made it on the it air. Did. I think we had to cut that for time. Wow, I remember reading it. And no idea. How much time do you cut out of a, an episode sometimes? Often uh, entire sections. <laughs> Stuff that's been animated. Entire and painful we, sections. Yes. <laughs> we, uh, as part of our deal with Rough Draft, you, Rough Draft people can correct me if I don't have it quite right, but I believe we get, we get to get two minutes of animation beyond what will fit on TV. Is that right? Right, just about two minutes, yes. So that's how much we cut out. But however, often we don't really cut out two full minutes of stuff because we will take out a little pause here and there or pull someone's dialogue over an exterior shot of the house. Um, 
So, for example, if we saw their house, then we cut inside, and they started talking, sometimes we'll start them over the exterior, that kind of thing, to save time. So we don't usually really cut two full minutes out. And there's also entire speeding up of scenes or sections of the show, right? Yes, in emergency, we have the computer technology to actually speed up whole sections of the show. Very rarely used, actually, on this show. The Simpsons uses it a little more. I hate that this came between us, Calculon. Me too. I'm filled with a large number of powerful emotions. A painful thought is that for syndication, you have to cut out another minute or two. And a lot of these stories are pretty complicated mm -hmm. and are going to be very hard to edit down. We'll just apply that computer speed up, though. <laughs> hey, or don't syndicate them. What would Bill, what, Billy, what would uh, the professor sound like if we sped him up 50% or so? <laughs> well, it depends on how you do it. If you use the uh, electronic gadget, you can have it in real time and the voice doesn't speed up. Suppose we use the Billy West gadget. <laughs> <laughs> the comedy version. I'm being difficult. Do the voice I know. Good news, everyone. <laughs> So basically what we're saying is that uh, if you're watching this in syndication, then you're not getting the whole thing. So we recommend buying this DVD. Thank you. <laughs> Tell your friends. Tell you all stole, your friends. If you've stolen this DVD, go back to the store and give them the money. <laughs> I love the pose that she's holding that. <laughs> a little, little repulsed. This time, you'll have all the human comforts. We'll get a couple of toilets, some food cookers, maybe a puppy. It's good to be home. It sure is. By the way, I saved your stuff. So that's where those skin flakes went. Hmm, you think this fruit tree's gonna get enough light? There's a window in the closet. <laughs> that was a great gag. <laughs> How closely have we stuck with that design for their apartment? Have new doors and things appeared? Or? Oh, they, they come and go. <laughs> <laughs> As we need them. Flexible mm -hmm. little floor plan. Everybody sing. Hey, this is the part that's always in a, a, a half inch by half inch little box in the corner of your, <laughs> in the corner of your TV screen. I can read it. This is the main thing you get when you buy the DVDs. <laughs> I know who I know people who wait till the end of the show and they've got a mi uh, a uh, magnifying glass right near the TV set and they go they want to read who did what animators <laughs> <laughs>